Hello everybody, Sawyer here and I have a review, a retro review for the um, 1999 miniseries um, All-Star Comics, The Just Society Returns. This was essentially a, um, you know, a story about the JSA and the Just Society of America, which, you know, are known, are pretty much credited with being the very first uh, superhero team, you know, comic book created. It was they originally published during 1940 uh, something, maybe or 1930 something. It was, you know, it is in the golden age of comics, and they are credited with being the very first time that different established characters were put together in a team. Um, so yeah, very, very iconic part of comic book history. They're the influence for the Justice League, both. You know, behind both behind the panel and within the actual comic book universe, they're you know they're the inspiration for the other superheroes, the younger generations. Um, so I've always been a big fan of JSA because my brother was a huge fan of JSA. So he you know he kind of introduced me to a lot of the stories, a lot of the Golden Age stories, and you know the '80s team ups and stuff when they when they would team up with J with the J O A L J O A L came to say it. God damn. But yeah, um, I wanted to, wanted to review this because. This was on the uh, DC Universe app right now, and it's a really, I've read it way back when it came out. It's a really good series. Um, whenever you look back at, like, more um, recent uh, JSA stuff, you know, like, basically, it's why I'm about, what I mean by recent is anything after the Golden Age, this always comes up as one of the greatest stories. I, it's just so, it's so good. It really invokes the classic feel of the um, original JSA stories. And it gives you a lot of depth into a lot of the characters, and you know, kind of really, um, you know, builds upon the characters. The bulk of the first issue starts off, you know, and focuses around Hawk, um, Our Man, you know, and it, we, we really dig into some of his, um, we really dig into some of his psycholo psychological stuff, like his his fault process. We see some flashbacks of him as a kid. You know, they're foreshadowing, you know, a mysterious man comes up to him as a kid and, like, you know, gives him a whole speech about how he's important and he's destined for for great things. And then, the, you know, then the man gives him an hourglass and he keeps the hourglass with him his whole life. And, you know, and then we find out that, you know, our man, as he gets older, he realizes that, you know, when he looks in the middle, he realizes that he's that man that, you know, apparently he must have went back in time somehow. And he gave himself that hourglass, but he doesn't really know why he would do that or, you know, anything like that. It's a really cool setup for a story. And all actually, it's kind of cliche, but it's a really cool setup. And then we start going into how our man's, you know, he's quit the JSA at this point. He, you know, he's trying to work, he's trying to focus his, his, um, his, you know, his things as a scientist, you know, making the, making the Mirakuru or the Miracle, Mir, yeah. And, um... They, we basically see that he's um, also helping out creating a truth serum to help with the war effort. This is like kind of like in the end. This is I think this is set like during the last couple of years of the war, whenever you know we were starting to push out Germany and stuff. Um, what ends up happening is that uh, one of his um, colleagues is is uh, you know our man suspecting him of treason, and he follows them to like an old abandoned shipyard or whatever. But then when he actually goes in there he, he realizes it's a lot more crazy than what he was expecting that their um the co-worker has got a whole group of like cult lists and they're like doing a a ritual on this um this old school magic character dr occult and they're basically trying to summon a demon or some sort you know so our man breaks in and starts breaks the party down but he does that after he called in some buddies which you know which we have this really, really cool panel that I'm about to show you where they, they come in. All of a sudden, our man brings in a whole brigade of magical users. We got Dr. Fate, Zatanna, uh, Spectre, and a couple other lesser known characters from the Golden Age. And it's a really, really cool, awesome panel. I really like the art, the art style really kind of, you know, it's a really, it's a really interesting art style because it kind of like, it, it looks modern, but it also invokes very well a golden age you know kind of feel and the artist is able to draw a lot of the characters in their kind of classical golden age look and it, it looks good like it looks like it uh holds up you know dr fate i mean that original dr fate costume is kind of silly when you think about it but this artist really does it in a pretty good way it makes it look good um so they start taking down the uh the cult list or whatever but then the, the demon thing comes out and basically absorbs all the different uh you know absorbs them like takes them in like um, you know, feeds on them and stuff, 
and he comes out and he's like this bad he starts killing everybody and our man has to get dr colton they have to run out of there and i'm and that's when you know that's when you know you fucked up <laughs> like whenever whenever the specter and dr fate have been defeated that's when you know you're in you're in deep water <laughs> Cause those are like two of the most, those are basically two most powerful characters of all time in the Golden Age, or really two of the most powerful characters in general uh, of the DC universe, especially especially Spectre. So, our man has to go to the JSA because that's the only people he knows left that can they can even possibly have a chance against this guy. So they try to go after the guy, the uh, bad guy, Stalker. I think is his name. But Stalker is just too powerful for them, and then Stalker summons like these, like, I think five or six heralds. That are all going to go to a different place, and I forget exactly what they're actually doing, but they have to be stopped. And uh, and the you know, time is of the essence, and they all go in the different directions all across the world. So um, the JSA, you know, pr pretty much decides that like a split second they have to follow them and they have to like divide into groups. So they all divide into two man groups and go after a different a different person. And that's where the miniseries really comes in, because there's only really two issues in the main miniseries. There's all-star comics one and all-star comics two which is interesting because the jsa originally began originally started in all-star comics number three so that was kind of like an homage you know of like restarting the restarting in the comic book title with number one and two of them being a team i thought that was kind of cool um and then you have all these little kind of um tie-ins because the tie-ins are not really like they're not really super important to the story but they're definitely they're definitely a great addition and each tie-in is is in is in a different original DC Comics Golden Age title that has been re, that was reproduced with a, with a new number system to have this story. So you got like sensational comics and all that stuff. Unfortunately, the, the DC app does not have the entire series. They only have the actual one and two. The, you know, they only have the one and two, the, the actual main issues that tell the story. They don't have the tie-ins, which is unfortunate. Um, I remember, I remember owning a bunch of them back in the day. I never, I never did get all of them though. Like I never could track down the Hawk Girl, uh, Wonder Woman one because that was apparently the hard one to find or whatever. Um, I remember my favorite one always being the Mr. Terrific and the and Jay Garrett Flash one. That was a really fun issue because Mr. Terrific's a great character and it was really cool to kind of see him at his breaking point. You know, each each of the tie-ins really get, digs deep into those into those particular characters and their. You know their mindsets, their uh, their character traits and stuff. Like I remember the Hour Man and, Mid and Doctor Midnight one really gets into like a heated debate over like you know addiction and uh you know trying to better yourself because Hour Man is basically a, a addict. You know he's a, he's addicted to his pills that give him powers. Uh, so all in all, really interesting series. So if you are a JSA fan or if you're even just a Golden Age like enthusiast of, of DC or if you just like a good story. Check this story out if you can find it, especially I mean, especially if you can find this, the uh, tie-ins too. Really, really, I've always really enjoyed it. Really good blast in the past. I was happy to see this pop up on the DC Universe feed, and uh, it reminded me of how much I really enjoyed this series. I just wanted to kind of bring it up for discussion, and you know, you know, maybe let people know that don't have never heard of this. You know, check it out. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, stay tuned for more videos.